Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is John 21, 1 through 14. And as Art did last week, I'd like to put it in some type of context. You can find it in your pew Bible, Bible on page 883. John 21 contains an account of the post-resurrection appearance in Galilee, which the text describes as the third time Jesus had appeared to his disciples. The third time the Easter promise of everlasting life is validated. The first time was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary as they visited the empty tomb on Easter. The second appearance is to the disciples, very interestingly, not including Thomas, doubting Thomas, on that same day. So here is the reading, John 21, 1 through 14, from Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message. After this, Jesus appeared again to the disciples, this time at the Sea of Galilee. This is how he did it. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the brothers Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. Simon Peter announced, I'm going fishing. The rest of them replied, we're going with you. They went out and got in the boat. They caught nothing that night. When the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them, good morning. Did you catch anything for breakfast? They answered, no. Jesus said, throw the nets off the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what Jesus said. All of a sudden, there were so many fish in it, they weren't strong enough to pull it in. Then, the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's Jesus. When Simon Peter realized this, that it was Jesus, he threw on some clothes, for he had stripped for work and dove into the sea. The other disciples came in by boat, for they weren't far from land, a hundred yards or so, pulling along the full net of fish. When they got out of the boat, they saw a fire laid with fish and bread cooking on it. Jesus said, bring some of the fish you just caught. Simon Peter joined them and pulled the net to shore. 153 big fish. And even with all those fish, the nets did not rip. Jesus said, breakfast is ready. Not one of the disciples dare ask, who are you? They knew it was Jesus. Jesus then took the bread and gave it to them. He did the same with the fish. This is now the third time that Jesus has shown himself alive to the disciples since being raised from the dead. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson comes from the book of Psalms, the 150th Psalm. I'm reading from Peterson's translation, The Message. You may find it, however, on page 508 in your pew Bible. The psalmist writes, Hallelujah! Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise God under the open skies. Praise God for his acts of power. Praise God for his magnificent greatness. Praise with a blast of, on the trumpet. Praise by strumming soft strings. Praise God with castanets and dance. Praise God with banjo and flute. Praise God with cymbals and a big bass drum. Praise God with fiddles and mandolin. Let every living, breathing creature praise God. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, whom we have not seen, whose gifts we take for granted and misuse, speak to us your word, that our turmoil may be stilled, our eyes opened, our ears alerted, so we may see and meet 
the living Lord. May our witness be authentic and faithful to the risen Jesus. Amen. For many of us, breakfast is the most ordinary meal of our day. Most of us eat the same thing every morning, day after day, week after week. If we stagger down to breakfast and find the box of Raisin Bran or Cheerios empty, we're not right for the rest of the day. Few of our meals are more ritualized, more predictable, and more humdrum than breakfast. It's not the meal where we look for creativity, unless, of course, we surprise ourselves and go out. What we look for is routine, something to get us up and get us going in the morning. So, where is it that we find Jesus nearly two weeks after that awesome, life-giving day of Easter? John tells us he's on the beach in Galilee cooking breakfast for seven of his disciples. And what's he cooking? The usual, fish and bread. After working all night, there was no better way for the disciples to start their day. Most of us are ordinary people who will go about our ordinary days in ordinary ways. Our lesson from John tells us this is where the risen Jesus meets us. The disciples are back in Galilee. They've gone home and gone back to work. To put it more bluntly, they are back in the ordinary. It seems somewhat bizarre that that's where they are, but that's where they are, back in the ordinary. Let me ask this. If you had come face to face with a person resurrected from the dead, not once but twice, would you be able to go back home and then go back to work? On one occasion, the risen Jesus had appeared to them and given them their marching orders. Go out and train everyone you meet in this new way of life, marking them by baptism, instructing them in the practice of all I have commanded you. Whatever happened to that command? Instead of going out into the world and making disciples, the disciples are back home in backwater Galilee trying to catch some fish. Is this the way we would have handled Easter? Handling Good Friday this way is more than understandable. That's the way the world treats its saviors and prophets, by killing them. One can understand the disciples going back home to work after a crucifixion, but after a resurrection? It doesn't make much sense that having met the risen Jesus, seeing him on several occasions and being in his undeniable living presence, that the disciples would still go back to Galilee and go fishing. Most of us think of resurrection as something that happens to us after we die, when we are taken up into another world. The resurrection of Jesus did not happen in the distant future, nor did it occur in some other world. It was right then, right there. When the risen Jesus encountered his disciples, they weren't up in heaven. They were out there in Galilee. They weren't strumming on harps of gold. They were trying to pull in their nets into the boat. Perhaps the trouble the disciples had with this resurrection was not that someone had been brought back from the dead. The problem was the resurrection had moved them from the future to the present. 
here was Jesus, right in front of them. Their difficulty was not that they were having trouble believing resurrection might occur somewhere, someday. The trouble with the resurrection of Jesus was that it was right then, right there. Eugene Peterson says he thinks this is why we find the disciples back in Galilee fishing. He writes, they need to reinforce their grip on everyday reality, the country they grew up in, the work they feel at home in, the sea and fishing boat, the fishing nets. They had experienced a huge shock. And we all know what that's like when it happens. Helpful friends are quick to urge us to get back to work as soon as possible, to lose ourselves in the habitual, the routine, and the predictable. This is what the disciples seem to be doing. But they aren't trying to get over the trauma of death. They are trying to deal with the trauma of life, eternal life, resurrection. They are trying to deal with Jesus standing before them, risen. Here are these seven disciples out in the boat, fishing all night, and they've caught nothing. They are back to their old, predictable routine of failure. They are failures at being disciples. They did not obey Jesus when he told them to go out and make more disciples. And they are failures at fishing. They had caught nothing. They didn't like failure, but it's a part of the real world. It's a fact of life. As the sun rises... They are surprised when they look toward the shore, and there he is, standing on the beach. They're a long way from Jesus, about a hundred yards off, and at first they don't recognize him. He calls to them and asks the most ordinary question. Did you catch any fish? They respond, no. Jesus tells them, throw the net off the right side of the boat and see what happens. They did what he said, and all of a sudden there were so many fish in the net, they couldn't pull it back into the boat. The disciple Jesus loved, who many believe to be John, is the first to see and cry out, it's Jesus! Peter puts on some clothes. Don't ask me why, because it doesn't make any sense at all. Dives into the ocean and then swims back to shore. There on the beach, Jesus has built a fire and has made breakfast. He invites them to eat by saying, Breakfast is ready. Once again, Jesus feeds their hungry souls. Since they've eaten with him many times before, they know who it is. It's Jesus. The scene is so ordinary, so every day. Here are seven fishermen sitting on the beach, and Jesus is feeding them breakfast. The point is not that Jesus is raised from the dead. It's that he appears to us here and now and feeds us. There in ordinary Galilee, during an ordinary workday, he shares an ordinary meal with his disciples. This is where we meet the risen Jesus, or more to the point where Jesus meets us. I know there's something to be said about getting away from it all, slipping away into some quiet place to pray and discern, or sitting alone on some mountain top as the sun's rays turn the world into burning gold, or sitting on the beach and watching an awesome sunrise. 
But there's also something to be said for doing what we do every day, for being where we usually are, for simply opening our eyes at breakfast. This is where Easter meets the ordinary. And this is where Easter is the most glorious. John tells us the presence of the risen Jesus with us is not just special. It is wonderfully ordinary. Jesus comes to us where we are, in the ordinary, here and now. We don't have to wait for some distant eternity to be close to the risen Christ. He comes out to Galilee, the Galilee where we live our ordinary lives. Standing on this side of Easter, if you hear nothing else, hear this. Jesus meets us in our Galilees, in our ordinary times and places, here, now. Jesus meets us when we gather at our tables, whether it's in our homes, at McDonald's, at the Kittle House, or here at this table. Jesus meets us on our way to work, in our office, in our classroom, on the playground. Jesus meets us as we care for this good earth, as we care for our bodies. He meets us as we meet each other, interact with each other, and care for each other. He meets us as we celebrate significant anniversaries, whether it's an anniversary of a relationship, being cancer-free, or being sober. He meets us in the kitchen as we prepare a meal for someone dealing with a catastrophic illness. He meets us on the treadmill, as we ride on the bike path or paddle our kayak. He meets us as we staff the food pantry, the bucket line in Haiti, or Sandy Relief. He meets us at the unemployment office, on the picket line, the immigration line. He meets us in the ER, the OR, and the chemo room. He meets us in the birthing suite, and at the grave site. Please don't expect to find this risen Jesus only in the holy and spectacular places. He's most apt to meet us in our ordinary Galilees, where we are doing the ordinary, mundane things we most often do. This is the point of this breakfast on the beach. When we go back to our Galilee, resume whatever it was we were doing before we came to this holy place, take up our everyday duties and fulfill our ordinary responsibilities, this is where Jesus meets us. This is where Jesus comes to us, calls us, feeds us, gathers us in, strengthens us, transforms us, and is right here with us. And in doing that, he redeems all of our lives, not just on Easter Day, but the day after, the week after, and the month after. You see, it's all about the ordinary.